I'd like to um, tell the chamber about a young man I recently had the opportunity to meet and some work I think we need to do here within this chamber. The young man's name is Anthony. He's 19 years old. He's from the west side of Chicago, currently residing in my district. And I'm going to tell you how it is I came to meet him. The reason why is we all just got back from a week off and many were able to travel over spring break. I remained in my district. There was a uh, celebration for a repurposing of a state facility in my district, the St. Charles Juvenile Detention Facility. And I went to it because I was excited about it. I was excited that the state has changed what has been a boy's home, a boy's juvenile detention facility into a career and education center. So now with our young men who unfortunately get in trouble, we are going to try and educate them and train them when they're finishing their time in the detention facility so they can go out and find a job hopefully and not continue down the same path. I applauded the administration that day for what they've done, and I will do so again today. I think it is a fantastic and wonderful thing. And there were about 50 to 70 people in the audience, and they're all supporters, and they were all there and helped make this possible. And I couldn't think of a better way to use state resources. But then I challenged them too. I challenged them because we're providing opportunities so these young men won't come back here. Why don't we do it on the front end so they don't end up here? Why aren't we providing them with the education, the training, and the job opportunities on the front side? And then after me, a young man got up to speak, Anthony, 19 years old, like I said, from the west side of Chicago. And he talked about the opportunities he was being provided. He'd been there for a while since before the transition started. And that there were some opportunities to learn to do some things before this transition took place, but many more now. And he is fully into it. He has learned how to drive a forklift. He will be certified by the time he leaves. He's learning how to be an electrician. He is studying. And he's bettering his lives and hoping that he will never have to come back to a place like this again. He wants to do something with himself. But then he also said one other thing that really, really struck me. He said, I wish I had had opportunities like this beforehand, because if I had, I probably wouldn't have ended up here. Opportunity, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Talk to Anthony afterwards. Very nice young man, very nice young man. One of the uh, elected officials I was there with asked him what he was there for. First degree murder, floored me, absolutely floored me. So now we have two lives. Anthony's has been forever changed and whoever's life he took that is now no longer with us because we're not providing enough opportunity. And as I said, opportunity is a wonderful thing. Unfortunately, we all had to read this morning that 510 men and women in Danville, Illinois, just lost all their opportunity. Their jobs are being eliminated. Another manufacturing facility in Illinois is shutting down. We've had over 1,000 of them since the beginning of the year. There's a news news article on it. We can't keep going this way. We can't keep going this way. Our young people are turning to crime when they shouldn't have to. Our families are losing opportunity and going other places. We offer, as well as all of you, bills with ideas for bettering our community. But for some reason, our bills don't get heard in committee. I have numbers here. Numbers this week, 213 bills came out of committee this week. 181 Democrat, 
32 Republican. It's 15 percent. For the whole year so far, 2024, Democrats have 434 out of committee. Republicans have 17, of which 18 were shell bills. That's not even 14 percent. If you take out the shell bills, that's 7.8 times as many. You have a two to one majority, I know. Not 7.89, we can't even get a proportional number. We want to improve the state too. We want to provide opportunity. I don't understand why we can't be allowed to have our bills heard. If they're so terrible, vote them down. This is ridiculous, I, this is going on. What's it going to take? What's it going to take for a facility in your communities to shut down and 510 people lose their jobs? Or for you to have to look in the eyes of a young man who's 19 years old who has had their life forever changed because he said, I didn't have the opportunity. We need to do better in this chamber. We can and we should. And it's not on this side to do it.